Okay, so most people that are pretty good in basic math can answer this math question without using a calculator. But uh, the real question here in this video is can you figure out the answer to this problem using more than one technique? So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual question. So we have two squared plus two to the third power plus two to the fourth power plus two to the fifth power. All right, so no calculators, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can get to the right answer. All right, so let's take a look at the solution. So the correct answer here is 60. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus. And if you're like, oh, Mr. You Too Math Man, I got the right answer, but uh, I only did it in one way. Well, that's very good, but I want you to think about this problem and uh, try to come up with a completely, completely different technique to get to the correct answer, which of course is 60. All right, so let's see exactly how we can uh, come up with the correct answer using two completely different techniques. Okay, now if you didn't get this right, no problem. This is not that difficult, and let's go ahead and get started now by um, actually looking at the easiest way to do this problem, okay? Now, the first thing we need to understand is what does, uh, you know, these little um, things right here mean, okay? Now, I'm kind of assuming that most of you uh, know what two squared or two cubed mean, but maybe some of you don't, so let's just kind of review this, okay? So two squared means take two and multiply it by itself two times, so that's two times two. So two cubed means take two and multiply by itself uh, three times. So that's two times two times two. Two to the fourth, you kind of get the idea right here, right? Is take two and multiply by itself four times. And two to the fifth means a take two and multiply by itself five times, okay? So if you just you know have basic multiplication uh, skills, you would handle all this multiplication first. Remember the order of operations, we have to handle multiplication before addition or uh, exponents, powers before additions. So that's kind of the main idea here. But in terms of um, evaluating these powers and exponents, uh, they're pretty straightforward numbers. So you can just be like, oh, two times two, I know what that is, two times two times two. Hopefully you can figure that out. And let's go ahead and actually see kind of the easiest approach to do this. Of course, you need to understand uh, you know, what a power and exponent is. And I just kind of explain that, right? All right, so two squared is two times two. Of course, I hope you know that that is four. Two cubed is two times two times two. So two times two is four times another two is eight. All right, so how about two to the fourth? That is 16. So that's two times two, which is four, right? And then a two times two again, that's another four or four times four is 16. And then two to the fifth is uh, basically two to the fourth times another two, right? So that's 16 times two or 32. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is simply take all of these numbers right here and add them up. And when we add up uh, four plus eight uh, plus 16 and 32, you're going to get 60. Okay, so this is the easiest approach. And quite frankly, if you were asked to just answer this question without the aid of a calculator, you would do, uh, you would do it this way and you would, of course, uh, get the answer of 60. Now, some of you might be saying, well, hey, why are you asking me to uh, solve this using another method? Isn't it good enough just to answer the question correctly? Yes, indeed, but uh, this is a good little prompt to um, explore something very important in mathematics, especially when you see powers, okay, which we have right here. Uh, and uh, there is some sum. So this is kind of a, uh, you know, a, um, a problem that I'm hoping you can identify some patterns, all right? So some of you might be saying, I'm totally lost, no problem, I'm gonna show you what I mean right now. But before I do that, I am going to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed. And when you do, make sure to hit that notification button. This really does help me and help my channel, okay? Uh, and you know, helps that YouTube algorithm. My objective is to reach as many uh, people as possible. Uh, you know, math is one of these things that unfortunately, so many people struggle in, it doesn't have to be that way. 99% of the reason why people have a tough time in mathematics is because the instruction that they receive 
is, uh, in my opinion, uh, a little bit like over technical. Okay, the way I try to teach math is a clear and understandable way. So if you like my instruction, this really does help. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, you'll find 2,000 plus videos from basic math to advanced math and calculus. All that's there for you, and of course, everything in between. Okay, so back to the problem. Okay, so one way you could look at this problem here is to factor out the greatest common factor. All right, so here you might be saying, what is this guy talking about, GCF? I don't want to do this using a GCF. You might be like, ah, I'd just rather do it the easy way. Well, this is important because if I uh, change these twos to like a variable like X, okay, you, of course you would have to kind of approach this problem in a different way. All right, so what I'm kind of showing you here is a uh, simplified version of, of a problem you could see in algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we could factor out the greatest common factor and do this problem in a completely different approach. All right, so what is the GCF? Well, it is the greatest common factor. Okay, but let's go ahead and see what that actually means here. So two squared is the same thing as one times two squared. Okay, so that is the same thing as two squared, right? Now, 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. Now, we could think of that as 2 times 2 squared. Now, notice here, this first term, this first number, has a factor of 2 squared. Okay, when, when things are separated by multiplication, these are factors. Okay, this one also has a factor of 2 squared. Now, this entire thing is a 2 cubed. This only has 2 squared, so we're looking for the greatest common factor. So these two right here have a factor of 2 squared. How about 2 to the 4th? Well, uh, we could think of 2 to the 4th as 2 squared times 2 squared. Okay. So again, our uh, factor, our common factor of 2 squared is showing up. And then 2 to the 5th is the same thing as 2 cubed times 2 squared again. So if you look at the greatest common factor, they all have this factor right here, 2 squared, and it's the greatest uh, a factor that they possibly can have because over here, the highest power of 2 is 2 squared. Now, another observation here is if we notice that 2 cubed is the same thing as 2 to the first times uh, 2 squared, if you add the exponents, we get and get back here. Right? So the, when you're multiplying uh, two powers with the same uh, base, like here, 2 squared times 2 squared, you add these exponents, we get back to 2 to the 4th, or 2 cubed times 2 squared. You add these right here, you get back to 2 to the 5th. So I'm kind of, um, you know, showing you this approach because this would be the kind of the, the thinking you would need to um, uh, uh, have if you had a um, an algebra problem. Again, if we weren't dealing with numbers and we were dealing with variables, okay? You need to understand the greatest common factor and you need to be able to uh, be able to, excuse me, uh, factor out the GCF. Okay, so now we're going to do something very interesting. So because we have uh, these great, this greatest common factor, okay, I can factor it out. In other words, I can put this right here, two squared, put parentheses, and this is an illustration of the distributive property. Okay, so I'll kind of walk through here. So without making this video too long, if you um, are struggling a bit uh, with what I'm saying, then you need to review the distributive property, factoring. Uh, so let me give you a couple quick suggestions. One, if you need help with like basic mathematics, uh, you know, if some of this basic stuff is kind of get to you, check out my um, Math Foundations course. I'll leave a description. Uh, uh, I'll leave a link to the in, in the description below. But uh, if you need help with powers and exponents, you may want to check out like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on factoring, uh, powers and exponents, etc., on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, but the main idea here is we want to factor out the GCF, and that is two squared. And we're going to use parentheses. And what remains? Okay, well let's go ahead and see. 1 is what remains right here. So that'll be that 1 right here. 2 to the 1st remains in the second term. So there's our 2 here. 2 to the 4th is what remains right here. Again, we factored out the GCF. And then 2 cubed remains right there. Okay, I know this is getting kind of busy, so let me kind of erase all this stuff right here so I can kind of uh, make this point. If I took this 2 to the 2nd and I multiplied back in, 2 to the 2nd, I would end up right here plus 2 to the 2nd times 2 is 2 to the 3rd power, right? Or 2 to the 1st. 2 to the 2nd times 2 squared gets me back to this situation, or 2 to the 4th. 
and 2 to the second times 2 cubed gets me back to 2 to the fifth, okay? So I factored out the greatest common factor, and now what I can do is simply just evaluate what's going on here, and I'm working with lower uh, powers of 2, okay? So this can make my life a lot easier, so let's go ahead and actually do that right now. Okay, so again, we factored out the GCFs. 2 squared is 4, parentheses, so I got 1 plus 2 to the first, or 2, plus 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the third is 2 times 2, which is 8. So now we just have 4 times 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. Remember, order of operations, I have to do what's inside parentheses first. So 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is what? That is going to be 15. So we're down to 4 times 15, which, of course, hopefully all of you can see that that is 60. All right, so this is a completely separate approach. Again, this would be um, kind of a... Uh, you know, very, very um, important if I had like x squared plus x cubed plus uh, x to the fourth power all over x squared, okay? One of the most common mistakes that students do in math is like, oh, I see an x squared here and x squared here. I'll just cross cancel. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And you'll get many points off. Do not ever do that in mathematics. What you have to be, um, what you have to do here is you have to factor out this x squared, okay? So you, know, you basically, again, we'd be uh, working with the GCF, so it would be 1 plus x squared plus x, uh, x to the first, excuse me, times x squared, okay? So you got to be um, really on the alert for opportunities where you can factor out the greatest common factor, and, of course, you need to understand all these properties of uh, powers and exponents. But uh, if you saw this second way to do this problem, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, uh, I would probably just give you like, uh, maybe like I would give you more than 100%. I'd give you like 150% and A++. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say, just go home. Uh, you know, you could just take the rest of the year off. I'll send you your grade in the mail. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.